Hello everybody, welcome to a brand new Adventure Gaming Let's Play. I am Chris, we are here at the Gaming Corner, and we're going to be playing a Golden Wake, which is a game that is set in the 1920s, and we will actually end up in Florida. As you can see as right now, we're definitely not, but let's start our new game. This game is a work of fiction set in 1920s Miami. Although it features some historical characters, locations, and events, it should not be taken as an accurate representation of historical fact. All depictions of real people in this game have been heavily dramatized for narrative effect, aka, it's not real, so don't have heart attacks. <laughs> but it must be real, we saw it on the internet. Right? Right? No. New York City, winter, 1921. Well, Alfie, old boy, looks like it's another day, another dollar. I love having another day and another dollar. We well, get to left click to interact with objects, right click to New look. York Tribune, five cents. So we have a sign. Morrison Banks, real estate sales, established 1886. The company co-founded by your father and your employer for the past 10 years. Hmm. Okay, we have a doorway. The doorway leads into the apartment building where you currently reside. That's Lyle, the newsboy. He usually stands around during the day selling papers and is good for a quick chat now and then. The blue mailbox stands under a layer of snow waiting to receive letters to be mailed. Well, isn't that nice? It's a shop window for the local tailor. You get all your ties from him. Isn't that special? Good morning, Mr. Banks. Good morning, Lyle. How are you doing? Is it cold out here? Cold Aren't enough you for you? Standing out here in this weather? A little, but I have to work. Otherwise, I'll be cold and hungry. Which is true. We don't want to be cold and hungry. So, what's the news of the day? I could tell you all of it, but then I wouldn't make any money, would I? If you want the news, buy yourself a paper. They're only a nickel. You're a shrewd businessman, Lyle. Ever thought about going into real estate? No, sir. Have a good day, Lyle. You too, Mr. Banks. <laughs> good morning, Mr. Banks. Good morning, Lyle. Have a good day, Lyle. <laughs> I'm you not talking too, to you Mr. right Banks. now, Lyle. We have exhausted our dialogue options. So let's go into our office. Morning, fellas. What's the good word? Good morning, Banks. Morning, Banks. Horse feathers? Why is it so hot Horse in here? feathers. Morris apparently has a chill. He set the heating on as high as it goes this morning. Suggs and I had to prop the door open so we didn't sweat to death. We must be raking in a fair amount this month if he can afford to do that. Or he's just doing it and not paying attention to the amount of heat that it's going to, I you know, the cost of the heat. I would pipe down. I know what you mean, Larry. He's giving me a headache. <laughs> Access the inventory as well as save load, quit, blah, blah, blah. So, okay, look, we just did. I did that. Go away. It's a hat. <laughs> it's your hat. Since there is no hat rack at the office, you often just set it on your desk. It took some convincing, but Morris finally conceded and allowed this pinup to be placed on the office wall. The blackboard lists the number of monthly sales made by each of the employees. You are currently in the lead with 27. Sucks. Yeah, Banks. Oh, he took his hat off. Neat. Let's 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 see what we can get out of him. How are you today, Suggs? Eh, I can't really complain. Well, I mean, I could complain, but who would listen? Not very many. How are your sales going this week? And eh, not so great. I had a sweet old lady yesterday who was this close to buying an apartment for her cat. I'm sure things will pick up. And I'm sure you'd know, being Morris's right hand and all. Now, sucks. That's hardly fair. You know we're all equal in here. Ah, uh, you're right. Forget I said anything. That was I'll kind just of mean. Let you get back to it. Thanks. I don't know how I feel about that, Suggs. So, yeah, Banks. I'll just let you get back to it. Thanks. <laughs> uh, okay. So we have Murphy. Got a minute, Murphy? Sure, but I'm still on the clock. What's up, Murphy? Everything going all right with you, Murphy? Yep. Everything's copacetic. Sales going okay for you? Could be a lot worse. Could be a lot better, too. 
You ever going to share your good fortune with us, Banks? What do you mean? You always seem to manage to get the best leads. That's pretty lucky, don't you think? I'm not sure I like what you're implying, Murphy. Not implying, just observing. Anyway, let's drop it. I'll let you get back to work. Mm-hmm. Oh, by the way, Banks, Morris wanted to see you. Said it was important. Thanks for letting me know when I walked in, Suggs. Hey, it's been a busy morning. It must have slipped my mind. Yeah, uh-huh. What's this door? <gasps> Paris. You have no need for a light bulb presently. The assignment board contains each individual employee's set of leads for the day. Morris usually gives out the more promising ones to employees with better performance. Which is usually you. Someday you hope you'll earn enough to take a vacation in Paris. For now, this poster will have to do. Ooh, it's a wastebasket. Aww. There's always stuff in the wastebasket. We got that's a lot of water we're getting. Time to pee. Can I get the cup out of the wastebasket? Aww. Game. All right, we need to see what this guy wanted. Morris's office has only one window, and it looks out towards your desk. That's probably why he keeps the blind down most of the time. <laughs> Doesn't want to look at me. Good morning, Evan. Sugg said you wanted to see me? Have a seat, Alfie. This doesn't seem like a conversation that's going to be pleasant. I'm afraid it isn't. You know I'm not the type to beat around the bush, so here's the long and the short of it. We're not doing well. Sales are minimal and the competition is popping up all over town like a bad rash. Uh -oh. I hate to do it, but we're going to have to let someone go. I see. Uh, who did you have in mind? That's mainly why I asked to see you, Alfie. You have more contact with Suggs and Murphy, so I think this decision should be yours. Ah, uh, well, I'm kind of on the spot here, but... That's not real. Uh, pfft, uh... Murphy was more of a butthole. He didn't tell me I needed... Uh... <laughs> Murphy's got a mean face, so I we'll think fire Murphy him. Murphy should be the one like Because him. that's how that should go. Well, but he just doesn't perform as well as he could. Very well, if that's what you think, then I trust your judgment. Thank you for your help, Alfie. It's always appreciated. Anything else you need? Not at the moment. Go ahead and check the assignment board in the break room for today's leads. Will do. So we have fired somebody. It's a great start. Morris has a poster from last year's Olympic Games. Ah. Morris has quite the inevitable collection of books. Most of them have to do with real estate, though. There are a few works of classic literature peppered among them. You can't see anything productive coming out of using that. No. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, maybe he could see us more and want to fire us. But where did they go? Oh, uh, there's the water cooler. Clear as day. He means well, but doesn't perform as well as he could. Can you believe it? I'd be performing three times as well if Golden Boy didn't take all the good leads first. I mean, just because he's Hiram's son doesn't entitle him to... Uh-oh. Quiet, somebody's coming. Gentlemen. Hello, Banks. Uh, you meeting with Morris go well? I would say so, yes. Great to hear. Well, uh, Murphy and I better get back to work. Uh-huh. You were eavesdropping. I know you were. You scan the sheet of leads corresponding to you. Making a mental note of the names and phone numbers, you prepare for another day at work. Chair? You don't feel the need to move the chair from its current con <laughs> position. Is it a comfy chair? While wow, they're all saying the comfy chair. What about Suggs now? Suggs. Yeah, Banks? I'll just let you get back to it. <laughs> uh, no, Thanks. he wants to say nothing to us because we were kind of a douche. Okay. Let's sit ourselves down. Sit down. There we go. <laughs> Wait, why would I say that? Make some magic. Shoot. Operator, connect me to the Stamford residence in Bensonhurst, if you would, please. 
Hello, is this Ms. Irene Stamford? No. Yes. yes. Hello, this is Alfred Banks calling from Morrison Banks. I just wanted to follow up on the deposit you put down in the apartment in Flatbush. No, thank you very much, Mr. Contis. A pleasure doing business with you. Hmm, five sales in 30 minutes. I think that might be a new record. Alfie, can you come here a moment? No. <laughs> I mean, yes. What is it, Evan? I'm running late for the weekly shareholders meeting. Could you lock up my office for me? Of course. Here's the key. I'll be back shortly. <laughs> Sir, you're fired. Get out. What on earth was that? Sounds like Suggs is being his clumsy old self as usual. Uh, okay. Well, I want to lock the door. Okay. Hmm. Let's see what's going on in here. Let me know if you need any help in there. Sucks. What's going on? I was trying to change a light bulb and slipped. But I'm fine. All that's hurt is my pride. Here, let me help you clean up. Thanks, Banks. I have to get back to it now. <laughs> I'm gonna get back to it. What? That was a bit odd. It. Yes. That was odd. Hmm. Why did he do that? Oh well. You sit back at your desk and prepare to make some more calls. Oh, uh, stay away from me, sir. Thanks. If you don't mind, I wanted to go over this sales sheet with you. Oh, <laughs> thought he was like going to like kill us because I'm we back, fired him. Got my key? Yes, Evan. It's right. Hmm. Odd. I thought I'd put uh... it in my other pocket. Anyway, here you are. Alfie? Yes? Where are tomorrow's leads? I beg your pardon? The leads for tomorrow? The uh -oh. ones that were on my desk? They're no longer on my desk. Where have they gone? I have no idea. I haven't been in your office since this morning. You know I trust you 100%, Alfie, but this is a very serious matter. I'm aware of it. Look, I'll get Suggs and Murphy together and we'll look for them. Or maybe you could just look under Banks' hat, Mr. Morris. What? We both saw you, Banks. There's no need to put on a charade. Coming clean will save us all a lot of embarrassment. Uh, Is what they're saying true, Alfie? What? No, I have no idea what they're talking about. Clearly, look at his face. Me looking under your hat, just to be sure you understand. See for yourself. No. Uh, dun, 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 dun. Really? You of all people? I'm going to defend myself. Evan, please, you know me. Would I be capable of doing this? I honestly don't know what to think, Alfie. You have to admit, this doesn't look good. Well, there has to be a logical explanation, but I can tell you I didn't do this. Alfie, look at it from my perspective. The leads were in my office when I left and gone when I came back. You were the only one with the key, and now they show up under your hat. Except that they in my shoes? key had been moved. So does this mean I've been canned? I hate to do this, Alfie. You know your father and I were great friends, and you've been no, an asset this fired. company. But for now, I think you should take an indefinite leave of absence. Fine. I see how it is. <laughs> These two rap scallions. I guess I'll see you fellas around. Hey, no odd feelings, Banks. Here you go. See? They ain't even wooden. <laughs> Screw you. Taking an early lunch, Mr. Banks? No, I... I just got fired. Sure. Just taking an early lunch. Well, if you need anything to read while you eat, I still got plenty of papers left. Can you go in there and, like, shit-kick those guys? Good morning, Mr. Banks. Good morning, Lyle. Let's get us a newspaper. Don't suppose the news of the day can be any worse than the morning I've had. Let me have a paper, please. That'll be a nickel. Thanks, Lyle. 
Murder. Murder. Extortion. <laughs> wow. Robbery. Par for the course in this city. See, there's a Chicago murder still unsolved. What's this? Merrick making waves in Florida? The article explains that there is currently a very promising land boom in the Miami area, especially with regard to a development known as Coral Gables. It goes on to state that the project leader, one George E. Merrick, is currently hiring a team of real estate salesmen to assist in this monumental undertaking. Miami, eh? I've always heard that place was nothing more than glorified swampland. But I'll be damned if I'm just going to roll over and freeze to death up here. When I'm finished down there, the name Banks will finally mean something again. So, Mr. Merrick, let's just see what you've got to offer. We have nothing to lose, for sure. Since they conned us. Oh, wait, wrong game. But it's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> Laura Bow and her nose for news. Oh, we're awful dapper. Hello, Miami. Alfie Banks has a raw. Oh, horse feathers. This humidity is something else. Right, I've got my luggage claim ticket. Now I just need to find this Hotel Belmont and... Hey there! Hello! Hey, hello! Are... Hello! You, me, you see anybody else around, son? Yes. Come on over here I mean, and no. have a chat with old Doc Dammers, why don't you? Doc Dammers? <laughs> there is an astounding amount of luggage piled upon the carts outside the station. The train didn't appear to be crowded enough to merit so much cargo, but perhaps the other passengers brought more than you did. The doorway leads back to the train. Let's leave. <laughs> Game over. Oops. You've arrived at the Miami train station, ready to begin your foray into the Florida land boom. The train ride was uneventful, but you've managed to preserve your sense of excitement at the prospect of working in this exciting young city. The sun fried your brain there, young fella. Come over and have a chat. No. The older gentleman has a wicked gleam in his eye, not unlike a snake about to strike its prey. His demeanor is that of a man 20 years his junior. Okay, no. painted wagon. The old wagon has been painted a garish red and has a very visible advertisement for the real estate services of one Doc Dammers. Apparently a name you can trust. May I help you with something? Pardon me for saying so, my boy, but I believe I'm the one who can offer you the help. I'm really not interested in buying anything, sir. Of course you aren't. Did you think I just fell off the turnip truck? I can tell a fellow salesman a mile away. You're here to get a piece of the action, aren't you? I... Maybe. Yes, I suppose I am. Then consider this your own little welcoming committee. What did you say your name was? I didn't. It's Banks. Alfred Banks. Well then, welcome to Miami, Alfred Banks. By your complexion, I'm guessing you come from up north. Yes, New York, actually. Hell of a town, but you'll find we do things <laughs> a bit York, differently New York, down here. New York, a hell of a town. If you got any questions, feel free to ask. Okay, let's ask about Coral Gables. I'm interested in this Coral Gables development I've heard about. Oh, straight to the top, eh? Yeah, they you know. call it Miami's master suburb. It's been meticulously planned and is ready to start construction at any moment. Lots Sweet. are going faster than a tin Lizzie downhill. If you want to get involved there, you're going to need to talk to the man in charge, George Merrick. Okay, well, we knew we had to talk to George Merrick, but do you know anything about George Merrick? Where can I find George Merrick? He's got a sales office downtown, right on Flagler Street. Okay, the that's good to know. Made of Coral Rock next to the Stocks and Bonds office. You can't miss it. Of course, George is incredibly busy these days and doesn't talk to just anyone. Maybe not, but he'll talk to me. I like your spirit, kid. You'll get places thinking like that. Uh-huh. He'll talk to me because I'm... Uh, he just will. What's he really the will. like down here? I've heard quite a few things back in New York. People are buying left and right. It's a great time to be in real estate. Plenty of dough to be made. Every day, more and more locals and tourists come looking for their own spot of land. And we're here to sell. Mark my words, Banks. We're on the verge of something great. Okay, what about you, Doc Dammers? How long have you been in this business? Probably longer than you've been alive, son. Before this opportunity opened up, I was selling lots on Miami Beach for Carl Fisher himself. Surely you saw his billboard in Times Square. You mean it's June in Miami? <laughs> of course, everyone saw that. It's partly what inspired me to come down here. Glad to hear it. That's a perfect example of good marketing and knowing your audience. 
Why do you think I'm out here by the train station? New arrivals are the easiest to sell to. There's a free piece of advice for you, Banks. Wonderful. The Carl Fisher I know is a uh, composer, not a real estate but agent, but done. that's okay. Of course, eager to get started, I understand. Uh -huh. And believe me, there'll be plenty to do very soon. It was a pleasure to have met you. Maybe I'll see you around town. I can more or less guarantee that, my boy. I don't trust you, but okay. You smell of things to make me sad and elderberries. <laughs> so we do know one place to go, which is Flagler Street, so that's where we're gonna head. Ooh, smile right toothpaste, yeah. It's Lorbo. The sign indicates that this is the records office for the greater Miami area. The large billboard looms above the building, the model's vacant stare gazing down upon you and your fellow pedestrians. Lorbo, Laura, hey, 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 how you doing? Has anybody died yet? Why are you here? Do we have a fun story? Uh oh, you're not really in the game. <laughs> The sign hanging from the brick building indicates that it is the Hotel Belmont. Probably should go into the Hotel Belmont. And that's an interesting Hello, carpet. And welcome to the Hotel Belmont. Well, you're excited, sir. The hotel clerk sits at the desk looking quite bored. Well, <laughs> the photograph shows the outside of the hotel and part of Flagler Street. Yeah, Flagler Street. It looks as though it was taken fairly recently, since the same billboard appears on it. Well, this is all new areas, I thought. The painting is an interesting example of, uh, wow, Char Charasuro? I've never actually heard that. Uh, if anybody actually knows the, pr the correct pronunciation, or at least the pronunciation you use, let me know. I think it's like Charasuro? I would something like that? But the subject matter is a bit odd to have in a hotel. I'm gonna look this up, actually. So, let me look here. We got time. Even if we don't, I'm doing it anyway. Okay. So we have... Oh, there it is. How do we say this? We got a thing. Hold on. Karaskuro. 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 Okay. Um, the treatment of light and shade in drawing and painting. An effect of contrasted light and shadow created by light falling unevenly or from a particular direction on something, which that's what it does in that, uh... There goes my phone in the floor! As you have the odd lighting there on that, so... Okay, well, well now I know what that is. Karaskuro. Groovy. I've learned something today in a Let's Play. I don't know how I feel about that. Excuse me. Sir? How may I help you, sir? Uh, I have a reservation. I'd like to check in, please. My reservation was made under Banks, Alfred. One moment, please. Yes, here you are. Your room will be the second door to your right when you get to the top of the stairs. Awesome. Oh, someone was here earlier from the train station to deliver your luggage. It's been placed in your room. I'll just take that claim ticket off your hands for you. Thank you very much. Not a problem, sir. Please, let me know if I can assist you with anything else. What about Is there Miami in general? You can tell an out-of-towner about this city? Certainly. It's been growing at an alarming rate, especially in the past few years. There's no denying we're at the start of a land boom. I hear tell this new Coral Gables development is going to bring in thousands more people as well. At this pace, we could be the next Manhattan by 25. Huh. Thank you for your assistance, my good man. Happy to help. Okay, well, let's go upstairs and let's check our room. That would be a thing to do. We might have our suitcase, something like that, we can check out. Might have some inventory items. Above your bed hangs a somewhat generic landscape featuring a mountain and river against a green sky. The window looks out into Flagler Street. You can see the hustle and bustle of traffic and pedestrians. It's definitely way less crowded here than in New York, however. That's a good thing. The small lamp is not to your taste at all but at least it will light the room when it gets dark. But there's plenty of light in the room currently, no need to turn on that lamp. Seeing as you just got here, the dresser is empty. But when we look at it, it says that we have a nice pine wood dresser that takes up one corner of the room. It's not bad as far as decorations go. 
Let's check out the mirror. You look in the mirror and see a tall, somewhat naive-looking young man staring back at you. He sure is a snappy dresser, though. Yeah, he looks like he's in the blue coats this year. Any of you that watch Drum Corps, that's kind of what their outfit looks like. Because it's <laughs> it really does. Look him up. Ooh, a note. Let's check out our note. You keep this note to remind you of the best technique to warm people up to make a sale. Remember bits. Break the ice, introduce yourself, tell a story, and sell your pitch. We have, let's see, clothes, a typewriter ribbon, and a photo. It's a tin containing a typewriter ribbon. You always carry an extra one, just in case. Let's take that. And then we have a photograph. You keep this photo of your late father in your suitcase so he can accompany you whenever you go. Oh, well, we definitely want to take that. Sentimental value. We also have this rug, but it doesn't do anything. So, we've got a few things here. We've got a little bit of money. You decided it would be a good idea to carry around a few bills. Money is always needed at the most unexpected times, after all. So then we have the money, the typewriter ribbon, and the photographs. So, this is going to end the first episode. So when we come back, we will check out Miami here and see if we can't get some leads on this real estate. Surely nothing could go wrong. I mean, you know, nothing bad happened to make us have to come here or anything. So <laughs> stay tuned for part two. And I hope you've enjoyed. I'm already enjoying this quite a bit. So we'll be playing to this the, to the end, no matter the views. So stay tuned. Bye, everybody. Bye.